Seven is the time right now, and we were watching it all morning long. We were. I saw it on my drive-in live. You were looking yep. at all the viewer pictures of oh, the yeah. red moon. Yes. But it, they don't call that, it that. No. <laughs> it's actually called the flower moon, but that's because it's, you know, we're in the month of May, flowers are blooming, oh. and so Native American lore. But which it's is not an every May things. kind of thing. This is this is not a, a, a no. A usual yeah, moon. a few things had to come together to create the kind of lunar eclipse that we saw this morning. And here to help talk about that a little bit more, we've got Dr. Andrew Poppy joining us this morning. He is an associate research scientist out at UC Berkeley. And Dr. Poppy, thank you so much for sharing some of your time with us this morning and talking about what we saw. Sure, good morning. Thanks for having me on. So they, do they call it a super moon because it's just super cool? <laughs> well, I, I, I think it's, it's super cool that. for yeah. sure. <laughs> me too. Uh, but uh, actually, the, the super moon term actually has to do with the way the, the, the moon orbits the Earth. It's not in a perfect circle. It's slightly squished to one side. Uh, and so what happens is every once in a while when the moon is on the closer part of its orbit, uh, coming towards the Earth just a little bit more than usual, it appears in the sky, I think it's 5 or 10% bigger. Uh, so sometimes if you catch it unawares, you'll look out the window and be like, wow, the, the moon looks really big. It's a super moon today. <laughs> so that's kind of a, a totally um, uh, different occurrence than this, this sort of flower moon name. Yeah, and I mean, we get full moons every month. It's just all part of the, the, the moon's orbit around Earth, but supermoon status only happens like, what, maybe a handful of times a, a year, right? Yeah, it requires a special alignment where you get, um, you know, the moon just to come just a little bit closer to the Earth uh, around its orbit. And, and what's special about the lunar eclipse that occurred uh, this morning uh, is that this supermoon uh, sort of phase happened to coincide with the total lunar eclipse as well. And that's where you get this sort of nice reddish glow there you go, nice reddish glow around the moon. Um, and that's kind of what gives this uh, uh, somewhat sinister, but also nice looking name of the blood moon where it's turning bright red. <laughs> the blood moon. And I, this is what I saw this morning, yeah. but when we t looked at pictures from Australia and down under, it was on the other side. Yeah, that little uh, yep. speck of a little sliver of white. Yeah, what's, what's happening is you're seeing the, the imprint of Earth's shadow onto the moon, but seen from different angles from different parts of the globe. Um, so it's kind of a unique experience no matter where you're standing. But then they couldn't see it on the East Coast. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, they were too far around the side of the, uh, the Earth. But uh, if you missed it this time, actually, there's another one coming up later this year in November 2021. And I believe that um, nearly the entire United States is going to be able to view the eclipse in November. So if you happen to miss this one, there's another one coming up later this fall. Pretty cool. Now, beyond the uh, lunar eclipse, let me ask you, just the moon in general, we had China land a rover on the far side of the moon. We've got NASA uh, looking to get back on boots on the ground on the moon by the end of the decade. That kind of news kind of excite you about the future oh, yeah. of exploration? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a part of what we do at the Space Sciences Laboratory at UC Berkeley. We're, we're involved in proposing missions to the moon. We actually currently operate uh, a pair of spacecraft that are orbiting the moon that are looking at uh, magnetic and electric fields called Artemis uh, around the moon. So this is big business for us here uh, at the Space Sciences Laboratory at UC Berkeley. It's an exciting time to be a lunar scientist. Yeah, and when we go to the moon, will it be cheaper to live there than it is in Berkeley? <laughs> um, rent? Maybe. It just might be. Okay. <laughs> I'll ask you real quick. If SpaceX offered you a ticket to go visit the moon briefly. Come on. Would you? Some people wouldn't. Don't, they think it's too scary, but would you? Oh, in a heartbeat. <laughs> I'd, I'd definitely go visit. I mean, since I was a little kid, I've had a telescope looking up, looking at the stars, looking at the moon. It was the, the focus of my PhD research. So uh, I'd be more than happy to go uh, put my own moon prints um, <laughs> on the moon. So. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Dr. Poppy, thank you so much for sharing some of your time with us Appreciate this morning. It. And Thank if you. you have any pictures of the lunar eclipse and the supermoon, we want to see them. Keep sending them to Cron 4. All you have to do is scan this QR code, and uh, that'll take you right to the Report It page, and you can share your picture with us, and we will share them on the air. We'll be right back.